Hey guys, welcome back to another Hartman Controls Protector.net tutorial. Today we're going to be showing you how to do the initial panel configuration, connecting a panel to the network and communicate with the Protector.net server that we installed. The goal here is to see a red notification in the web interface, indicating that the server has received an unknown connection from a panel. Our first step will be to plug in the panel's Ethernet cable. Our panels require power over Ethernet for easy installation. The LCD screen will show basic information about the panel, such as the panel's name, IP address, door states, and so forth. By default, the panel will attempt to obtain an IP address through DHCP. To navigate and do basic configuration, we'll use the four buttons on the bottom right here. The white buttons represent up, down, left, and right. The third button is the enter button, and the last one here is the escape button. To configure the panel, start by holding the enter button for 3 seconds. A prompt will show asking for a setup password. By default, the password is four zeros. To confirm the password, press escape. It will show access granted, followed by the configuration menu. The panels will by default attempt to attain an IP through DHCP. If you require a static IP address for the controllers, Start by going down the menu until you reach Panel Comp Mode. Click Enter. Here you can define if the controller is going to obtain its address through DHCP, or if you'll be providing it a static IP. In this case, we'll stick with DHCP. If you do require the panel to have a static IP, scroll down to Panel IP Address, panel subnet mask, panel gateway, and panel DNS. For this video, we're going to stick with DHCP. Once the panel has an IP address, the next step is to configure it to connect to the server. We provide three options to connect. IP, name, or to the server announcer. The server will announce its IP through UDP broadcast. It's important to note for security reasons the panel will only respond to this broadcast if it has never connected to a server before. To configure it, the controller to connect through IP, choose server IP from the top. Enter the IP address of your server. You can do this by navigating to whatever characters you want to change using the right and left arrow buttons. Once you get to a character you want to change, click Enter. You'll notice that character is now flashing, which means we're in edit mode of that character. Click Enter again to stop editing the character. Once the IP address has been entered, click Escape. Confirm your change by clicking Enter. To configure a panel to connect through server name, choose the server name option. Input the name of the server. And then finally, adjust the server con mode to server name. In this case, We'll stick to server IP. Once you've configured your preferred method of server connection, press escape to save and exit the setup screen. The panel will then attempt to connect to the server. If everything is configured correctly, you'll see an unknown connection from panel notification in your protector.net interface. As we can see, We've already gotten that notification here. The most common problem with panels not connecting have to do with firewalls. Our panels by default use port 9876 through TCP and UDP to communicate with the server. Our installer by default tries to open those ports on Windows firewall during installation. However, if there are any third-party firewalls between the panel and the server or third-party firewalls installed on the server, these will need to be configured. A good way to test this is to either try to ping the panel from the server 
or place the IP of the panel into a web browser, you should be able to access the built-in web server on the controllers. Another problem is when using the option to connect using server name. Our panels cannot use Wins to resolve a server name, which is a proprietary version of DNS for Windows. A lot of small business routers don't have DNS. If you're encountering connection issues, try using the server IP instead. In conclusion, our panels provide a wide variety of options on the hardware to configure the panel to connect to the server. Once you've successfully connected the panel to the server, you can do all these same configuration and more through the web interface. This concludes this tutorial. Please start our next video on adding the panel in protector.net.